So problem 2.2, we're going to build a histogram. Now, a histogram can be used to represent the distribution of numerical data. We talked about a box plot representing every single point. But when you have a lot of data, like we have here, it might not make sense to plot every single point. Because that's going to be a lot of numbers and a lot of dots. So, if we want to use a histogram, what we do first is we make what's called a frequency table. And all that means is we're going to break down our data into specific categories, and we're going to denote the frequency, which really means the number of times that each of that, each of that range of data occurs. So when we have a data point that falls into each of those categories. So the first category we'll do anywhere between 40 and 50 days to produce fruit. So we have all these listings here of all different tomato plants and how long they take to produce tomatoes. So luckily our data is in order, which is nice. So our data is in order. So if we have ordered data, we can just go through and pick all the ones that fall into the different categories. So between 40 and 50, we have 47. That's one tomato plant that meets that category. So now we're looking between 50 and 60. We have one, two, three, four, five, because we include 60, between 50 and 60. So one, two, three, four, we have five number of plants, so the frequency is five. Now between 60 and 70, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because we'll include 70. So we'll fill in nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another nine between 70 and including 80. Now between 80 and 90, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And it looks like we don't have anything that's above 90 between 90 and 100. So we have nothing. So there's our frequency table. Now we can take this directly to the graph and we can make our really what looks like a bar chart. So we're going to use this laid out axes to make our histogram. So between 30 and 40, we have no plants between 30 and 40. So there is no need to make any bar there. Now between 40 and 50, we had a frequency of 1. There was one plant. So we want to make a bar that starts at 40, between 40 and 50, that it's at a height of 1. Now between 50 and 60, we're going to go all the way up here to 5. And we want to connect the first bar from 40 to 50 with the bar from 50 to 60. Now we want to go up to 9 between 60 and 70. So we want to be all the way up here at 9. Another 9 between 70 and 80, so that makes that easy. Back down to 6 between 80 and 90. And nothing when it comes to between 90 and 100. So a lot of times what you might see to help yourself out is you can put a little number on top to show you how high the bar is to make sure they match up with your frequency table. And sure enough, we have one between 40 and 50, five between 50 and 60, nine between 60 and 70, nine between 70 and 80, and another six between 80 and 90. So this helps us show how the data is spread between certain ranges. Now, Secondly, we're going to use the same data and create a new frequency table with interval widths of 5 instead of 10. So what we want to do then is create a frequency table where we have, let's see what the wording they used here. So we have the days and then we have our frequency. So we know that the earliest starts is 47. So if we want to use 5, usually if we look at our graph, we're counting by 5s. So let's use between 45 and 50, 50 and 55, 55 and 60, 60 and 65, 
you can see what I'm doing here. Just counting by fives. And we know that our highest, so we need to make sure we go up to 90. Okay. So now what we're going to find is that now that we've cut down our ranges, the frequencies are probably going to change because now we're having smaller categories. So between 45 and 50, we still have our 1. Between 50 and 55, we have our 1, 2, 3. Between 55 and 60, 1, 2. Between 60 and 65, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, because we'll include 65 on that end. 1, 2, between 65 and 70. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, between 70 and 75. 1, 2, 3, 4, gets us up to 80. 2, 3 will bring us to 85, and then the final 3 fall in the last frequency category. So now if we go to our histogram, we'll draw it and then we'll try to compare and see kind of the, how they differ. So we know we have nothing between 30 and 35, 35 and 40, even 40 and 55. So now we go to our 45, we have a bar of one. In the next five, we go up to three from 50 to 55. Then we jump back down to a bar of two. Then we shoot all the way up here to seven, back down to two, back up to five between 70 and 75, then down to four, then from 80 to 85, we drop down to three, and another three from 85 to 90. So, if I can get these both into focus here, they look a little bit different. Now, technically, they're talking about the same overall data. It's all those tomato plants, but they definitely look quite different. So depending on how we change our ranges that we want to look at, our frequency tables, excuse me, our histograms are going to look a little different. So for example, right, these bars are much larger in terms of their width because they cover 10 instead of 5. We have many bars that are taller, meaning that those categories have more frequency. And generally, it kind of there's really it's kind of consistent with its shape. It goes up and then it kind of comes back down. Whereas if we look down here, we kind of go up, then we come down, then we go way up, then we come down, then we kind of follow that pattern. Whereas this one, we kind of go up, hit the top, and then we come back down. So depending on how we change things up, our histograms are going to look different, but it's all based on the categories we choose for the ranges of our data.